you know, back in the early 90s after you met Willie Nelson, uh, I was honored to get a call from you and say, Willie Nelson's going to contact you. And I, I could hardly believe it, actually, when you called and told me that. But, you know, less than a couple of weeks later, that really happened. I really appreciate that. But then about three weeks after that, I flew there to Lexington. And starting at the Hyatt Regency, right next to, is it Rupp Auditorium? Rupp Arena. Rupp Arena. You took off in your red uh, Mercedes-Benz station wagon and drove uh, in a hemp biodiesel car. Could you tell our audience a little bit how, how that came about and how you actually first taught Willie Nelson, who's now a big proponent of biodiesel, about hemp biodiesel? We'd always heard that uh, Rudolph Diesel had manufactured his diesel engine run off seed oil. We really didn't understand, quite grasp that. This was in uh, the early 90s, uh, late 80s. And uh, then a fellow from Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada, came through town driving a little Volkswagen diesel, and he was running it off Burger King oil. And so we had just uh, derived some hemp oil out of hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are 30 to 40 percent oil by weight. You got 100 pounds of hemp seeds, you can drive 30 to 40 pounds of pure oil out of it. And so we had some of that, and he tested it out in his engine, and he said, this is the best seed oil that I've ever driven this car on. And so we had seed oil. When Willie came in to do a benefit concert for me, we poured that hemp oil into my Mercedes diesel and drove it about 110 miles across Kentucky. And it was the first time in, I guess, 50 to 60 years that any vehicle had ever been driven on hemp oil on the United States roads. Uh, but Willie told me later on, uh, 12 years later, actually, no, I mean, uh, no, about 10 years later, he says, Gatewood, he says, that afternoon, we did that, it taught me what it was all about, and that's the reason I started my biofuel company, was from what we learned that afternoon driving your Mercedes across there. And we were also smoking about the biggest hooter that probably rode in Kentucky at the time. And there was a caravan of us. We went from uh, the Hyatt there and, and Rupp Auditorium through Frankfurt, the state capital, yeah. which is about 80 miles, and then altogether 120 miles all the way into Louisville, which is the largest uh, city in Kentucky, and then he did a big benefit concert for you there that night. That's right. And so uh, it was a real honor to participate that, in that. And I know CNN uh, had their environmental show, Earth Watch, and they covered that pretty intensely. So you're running for governor again. If you were elected, what are the top three action items that you would enact as governor? You know, Kentucky is a dysfunctional state. Uh, we've not been able to pass a, a balanced budget in, uh, in four out of the last seven sessions. We've had to go to special sessions and advanced sessions to uh, get the actual budget passed because neither party can produce a candidate can disengage from the partisanship long enough to work with the other side. It's just all very vicious and vituperative and people are getting turned off with all the negative ads. And what we've got to do first and foremost most is to restore a sense of integrity and honesty and even handedness in the process itself. We could come up with all kinds of hypothetical programs and uh, that we could uh, apply and let the people have access to, but it would get shredded by the, uh, by the, uh, the policies of fear and retribution on the state level. So we've got to return uh, integrity and trust in the process itself. Uh, in the state of Kentucky, it's very poor. We're, we're among the third or fourth poorest state in the union. We've got 23 states of Appa, uh, 23 counties of Appalachia, which are the poorest uh, regions of the union uh, of the states. So uh, we need to uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, get people interested in the process again because nobody wants anything to do with it. It's just so dirty and mean and despicable, and everybody's calling everybody. I've run before where I said, I believe all my opponents are honorable men and what they're saying about each other is true, which makes them all unfit for office, uh, you know. But uh, so, so the first thing is to try to restore that integrity. And the way we, we do that is by giving everybody a chance to do right. Uh, you know, we cannot oppose these people. We can't overpower them. We've got to cajole them into doing what they believe is right for the people. In Kentucky's dynamics, for 40 years, the Democrats ruled everything. The Republicans didn't have, any, didn't have the House, didn't have the Senate, and didn't have the governor's office. For 40 years, the Democrats ruled over the Republicans and treated them like shit. 
And so uh, 10 years ago, the Republicans took over the Senate and they've been practicing the politics of retribution for the last 10 years. And uh, you know, they've been treating the Democrats like they got treated for those 40 years and the Democrats don't know what to do. They're screaming like scalded dogs, you know, but they did it to the Republicans. And so uh, the fellow, there's been one fellow who's doing it, he's called the bully, uh, the leader of the Senate. And you know, he is a bully and uh, he can be other than charming on many occasions. But he's just giving the Democrats what it is they gave the Republicans all that time. So what I'm telling the people of the state of Kentucky, look, it's time to stop practicing the politics of retribution and get into practicing the politics of achievement. You know, we can no longer, you know, be retributive and, and because it's killing the state of Kentucky. We're bankrupt. We're absolutely desperate for cash. And that's why I believe that uh, my plan to immediately start planting hemp as a cash crop next spring, you know, within two months after I take over the office of the state of Kentucky, my, my first act I'm going to do is I'm going to take the military helicopters out from going over the fields and gardens of the people of the state of Kentucky. You know, this is America, not Afghanistan, and we're not an occupied territory, and I'm not going to treat our citizens like we are one. I'm going to take the Army and the National Guard out of police activities. They're no longer going to be assisting state police. Those helicopters are going to be used for emergency medical and disaster relief only. And so uh, we're going to uh, revolutionize the relationship between the police and the people. There's no longer going to be an us versus them kind of attitude. There's going to be we, and there's going to be respect given. And don't come in here and mess up. Don't come in here and confuse our civility and statesmanship with being weak on anything. We're not. <coughs> but we're going to start treating people as sovereign human beings. We're going to get marijuana into the hands of the, uh, the sick and dying folks immediately, as soon as we can. Uh, we're going to try to set up a, a even-handed tax regulatory system on it so we can get some new tax money in instead of taxing, uh, you know, instead of putting more taxes on the wage earner here in the state. I mean, let's face it, uh, the, 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 if we just took the profits of the drug lords and put them into our educational system, it'd be sobbed overnight. Uh, I saw, saw a bust of a drug lord down in, in Mexico the other day. He had $12 billion stacked stacked in a room, $12 billion. Now that's, that's the budget of Kentucky for two years. He had stacked there. What we could do with education, what we could do. The other thing I want to do is I'd really like to sue the pharmaceutical companies and make them come up with hundreds of millions of dollars in drug treatment programs for the, uh, for the problems that they're solving with their pharmaceutical medicine.